welcome. After a short break, we are back with our show. The show with the cat. We are here today in Covio Studios. This show is part of the transnational network of Covio.info. With me today in the studio for moderation, we have Dr. X Cat's cat, as well as the Riot Cat and myself. Rent Strike Cat. Before we start, some info about us. From now on, we plan to release our news format bi weekly, so feel free to share infos with us and send us content you want to see as part of this show. Mail it to our production office, coview at riseup.net. We now start with an update on COVID 19. COVID-19 and the situation about it, it less than the media. At least in Western media, there's less information about what is going on in a world related to Corona. Even if people in China or places in places like Austria and Germany to party in public space and to join demonstrations in masses, it does not mean we did overcome the effects of the virus. It is important to check the situation in countries like Brazil and Mexico. It's important to negotiate a post-corona society in the clear understanding that the applause given for the system-relevant work will neither pay the rent nor that the neoliberal capitalist politics can be our future. The housing situation is still unsolved for thousands of people who can't pay the rent. This could trigger a massive wave of evictions and people lose their homes. The health sector needs to change for better. There needs to be a global solidarity and support with the economical situations of many. We currently have the danger of Corona making all gaps within society bigger. From the gender pay gap to the general income difference in between rich and poor as well as the global, as globally the Western countries profiting within the crisis. Let the rich pay for COVID-19. Our focus must therefore shift towards the areas where there is not yet support given like the support of people doing sex work is not going well. And whole sectors like culture and artwork are in many areas of the world still left without support. Therefore, we support all kinds of actions and manifestations that makes this gap visible. Making actions and on this can take various forms. For example, in Vienna already fourth time that manifestations two meter distance for arts and culture took place to show the missing support of those um, in political power. And a group of artists and cultural workers around Austria formed um, to march in silence. Because it would get quite silence when, when the diverse voices and forms of expression within arts and culture would not get support. Therefore, they will march on 1st of July in Vienna and other cities. Check out the web website www.schweigemarsch.org. And now, some short news. Covid fees. Also related to the topic, we demand that all COVID-19 fees to be removed. More and more decisions by court show that in many cases there was no legal ground for the fees given by out by police. While people with secure income have enough space in their villa, private parks or yachts to practice physical distancing, people in dramatic financial circumstances are actually threatened by the high penalties. Numerous official acts of punishments were presumably unlawful and were also selective. Next topic. Pride, not fundis. On Saturday the 13th there would have been Pride in Vienna. The Pride in Vienna is, ha is usually having several sides. There is the heavy commercialized Pride and the fact that actual police groups like the gay cops gain space within the Pride is criticized. We, as activist news network, also want to remember that Pride did start of the Stonewall riots. Cops should not to be part of any pride, as well as Christian fundamentalists. They don't have a stand at the pride park, but every year they rally against the pride. So in addition to the pride and the Christian fundamentalists, there is always another demonstration happening against their protest. Even with no pride march marching this year, the Christian fundamentalists decided to gather and to demonstrate. They joined ranks, not the first time, with the far right wing extremists of the identitarians. Still, they were not more than 150 people, while several hundred queers, LGBTIQA+, and others joined in the protest to blockade their march and to show their support for pro-choice and a queer future, where all right-wing extremists and Christian fundamentalists will be odd stories from the past. More on this you can find under the hashtag Marsch für den Arsch. We'll now come up with an event tip. On distance, 
Festival. Prides in over 500 cities around the world have been cancelled due to the coronavirus. For millions of people, Pride events represent a precious moment of visibility, community and solidarity. Pride boosts our movement and our community, powering our batteries for the coming year. Without it, our sense of belonging, our visibility, our advocacy and our ability to support each other are all weakened. But we don't need up to give on Pride 2020 around the world. The power of digital gives us the chance to come together for Pride in spirit, if not with our bodies. It allows us to respect physical distancing, but embrace social and community cohesion. It allows us to celebrate who we are and who we love across borders and cultures. This is Hashtag Undistance. Check out the awesome lineup in the program in June to July 2020 online on undistance.weareallout.org. We now come up with a little more sad story. Fossil fuel crisis in Arctic region. In Siberia, over 20,000 tons of fuel dropped in the river Abanacha. A power station in Russia collapsed in the end of May. The fuel for cars dropped 20 kilometers down the river in the direction of the sea. The usage, transport and advancements of fossil fuels are a threat for our planet and accelerate climate change. This needs to be stopped. The age of fossil fuels has stopped ages ago, but governments are still not able to punish these companies by quitting the trade. Let's move into new sustainable energy production. Greenpeace Germany has again a petition against the users of fossil fuel you can sign online. Activist updates, new tactics. Signal, our old favorite security messenger app, has a new feature. Right in the time of the uprisings in the US, the app brings a new face blurring option. So our protests can stay visible and our faces can stay protected. If you don't use Signal yet, go and download it. Difficult times always need new strategies. Therefore, we clearly support this innovative use of gardening tools, but see for yourself. Black Lives Matter is a worldwide movement started by the Sikh Justice for George Floyd a black man killed in Minneapolis by a policeman. I can't breathe have been one of his last words before his death. The horrible scenes were filmed by many civilists and started a worldwide fight and movement. People are demonstrating for justice and protests as well as riots fill the streets in the US. Let's check what's happening with the unicorn riots with the topic Black Lives Matter. Unicorn Riot. The current protest once again shows the importance of self-organized media coverage and the independent media work. The media collective Unicorn Riots, whose work we already did feature in other shows of us, was there in the beginning. They did cover the protest in a good way, respecting if activists did not want to show their fair faces. Unicorn Riot started to become a trend in the U US on Twitter for some days and their number of followers climbed from around 80,000 to 200,000 in a few days. They provide a solid coverage of what, what is happening in Minnesota and other places. Check out their website and their social media accounts. And here we have a short in-view on their news coverage. Their website can be found under unicodriot.ninja. Yeah, you're right. In yeah, Chicago, they, they, they would they actually take you to an alley and fuck you up and then let you go. Seriously though, we're we're in the middle of um this was a peaceful protest that's going on here right now. And then these guys came up the street all of a sudden and decided to shoot rubber bullets at us. And they shot their little rubber bullets. Even I got hit in the leg with one. And I'm just out here as an old dude just recording shit and making sure that our business down on East Lake Street or West Lake Street is protected. And seeing how it's being protected. I ain't got no business being out here, but after two days of seeing this chaos and the lack of our government involvement, I was like, no, 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 no. I need to get out there and make sure and see what the fuck is going on. But now that I get out and see what's going on, I realize why the third precinct was burnt down. It wasn't burnt down because people were mad at the police, it was burnt down because the police were mad at the people.
George Floyd really has been a catalyst for pushing these larger demands of divesting from the police and abolishing the police. You know, we've seen like, what, five to ten different organizations cut ties with the police already? So really it's, it's feeling like we're getting nearer to liberation and it just hurts that, you know, it has to come at the expense of like people's lives being lost, but, you know, Again, it's a catalyst and I feel like we're trying to, to organize around that and I really love the outpouring of just support, the resource, the networking, the mutual aid. I feel like that's really the coming together. We were just talking about how like, if there's always this much food and water, like why can't we just always have it like this? You know what I'm saying? We, we have the capacity to, to create these mechanisms that are keeping each other safe and fed and, and taken care of. Can you give us a synopsis of what you think a world without police looks like? Definitely just money going into mental health services. I'm talking like therapists, counselors, you know, family therapists, relationship therapists, like really giving mental health the funding and the and the attention that it needs. And really when we talk about abolishing the police and like transformative justice, really transforming the conditions that that allow for crime to happen and allow for injustices to happen. So when we're building up these super tight support networks of getting people the food that they need, making sure people have money to pay rent, making sure people are right in their minds and, and having the healing and holistic health that they need. I feel like when we push all of those, just kind of general wellness, that sets the groundwork to be able to abolish the police. And, and when we say that we're gonna transform the conditions that we live in to, to allow us to be our best selves, I feel like that's, that's what's gonna be the potential for us to like not need this sort of oppressive, militaristic force on us already. So definitely, plugging into mental health sources, um, plugging into kind of like restorative justice, community-based like uh, forums, whatnot, you know. All of this is really, like I love the imagining portion because I feel like it's really hard for people to imagine what, what life is like outside of the police. It's easy for people to imagine like the end of the world, but how do you imagine a utopia for yourself, you know what I'm saying? So just imagine a world where everybody has everything that they need and it's like why would you need police if we're all taking care of it, if nobody has to steal and shit on other people. You know? One scene has filled the timeline in the last weeks. The 18 foot tall statue of the 17th century slave trader in Bristol was down, turned down by Bristol Harbor. It was the statue of Everett Colossal who made money by slavery and who spent his wealth to the city. Time magazine suggested that Colston transported 84,500 kidnapped African men, women and children during the tenure of this company table the governor. Almost 20,000 of the enslaved individuals died on a cruel voyage across the Atlantic. The figure has since then been retrieved by officials. It has been said been displayed on Bristol's museum alongside the blaze cut of the Black Lives Matter protesters in the crowd when it was torn down. Liverpool Institution added, the representation of Edward Colston was highly contagious and offensive to many. And to bring him down, it is an important note that we are not erasing history, but instead making history. why we need to have a chat with white people. A comment by mental illness activist Rafaela Mancuso from Canada. The mental illness activist from Panda Canada got a message for other white people in behalf of the Black Lives Matter movement. A lot of white people join it, but how do they really help? That's the question Rafaela takes. She says that we as white people benefit directly or indirectly from white privilege and systematic racism. Yes, we still have a hard life, and yes, we can also have struggles, but it has nothing to do with the color of this thick skin. 
In her Instagram video, she tells how Black Lives Matter becomes a movement and does not stay a moment. For all of you who are active on social media, listen up. Another story. Donald Trump says Antifa is a terrorist organization. To get the point what Antifa means, let's use a dictionary. Antifa means antifascism. It's not an organization, it's a basic attitude. It's about the lack of democracy where democratic rules and freedom of speech should be provided. Antifa is the arm of a democracy to tell that no interest should stand above another, no matter if it's, for example, housing or education. It should be provided for everyone. Antifascism does not accept the privilege of any race, gender or society cluster and the aim is to defend the rights of democracy. If democracy is not lived or provided by the state or a person, the fact that has lost the rights of freedom of speech in the view of Antifa and should be fought. This might sound paradox, but Antifa does radical shit only because democratic values are not lived or respected. See it as a guardian of democracy, not as a fighter of it. And because it does radical actions and behaving only is a sign of how far we have separated from democratic government and society. This was a little summary of Hosea Rachelas post, he's a Viennese comedian and posted it on Facebook, and leads to the post of Antifa Berlin as a response to Donald Trump's statement. If Germany turns even more into a civilian state, how can Antifa be the terror organization? Which country lets soldiers kill people? Which police guards are beating up protesting humans? Which secret services and which defense of constitution is observing the doings of left-winged organizations? The Antifa Berlin took therefore part in the Black Lives Matter demonstration and stood up for no justice, no peace. We are not a terror organization. Capitol Hill built many self-organized police-free zones. A flourishing autonomous zone is growing in the Capitol Hill Seattle neighborhood after police wakened an uh, office following over a week of violent clashes and rioting. Capitol Hill is the historic queer neighborhood and back in the days it were the punks and the musicians and all, where all the freaks lived. It pitched the battles around Ferguson in 2014-15, Occupy in 2011-12 and the anti-police movement in 2011-12 10 saw a majority of these conflicts on the hill. It has always been our neighborhood. But as what, what is happening in literally every other city in the US and worldwide, rapid gentrification and democratic shifts kicked out everyone except um, those who have a lot of money. It turned into corporatized Pride Month and the neighborhood was built into a tech corridor. Currently, these streets are ours again. But what comes with the next battle? And the question remains, what is autonomy? This is an outtake from an interview about Capitol Hill. Check out all the other infos on itsgoingdown.org backslash get in the zone. We have a new profile for you to follow up. Movements for justice and equality rights took place since the Second World War or even longer. Since the corona pandemic, activism has more than ever become a hashtag invasion. But it is on us to not let fear and rules overcome our rights and to not be controlled by the taking of our freedom of voices and choices. There have been many role models in foreign times of activism, which should be an example for us to not stop the protest, no matter what. No matter what, because Working Class History posts about these stories on Twitter and Instagram. You should check them out. Like one story posted about the Algerian Black Spring Rebellion peaked as nearly a million demonstrators marched in Algiers. The uprising began two months before after the police murder of a young man and swept the country. Amazigh people, commonly known as Berber, in Kabylia and elsewhere demanding democratic and cultural rights. Check out Working Class History for more posts. Hanau, a throwback on the attack on February 19th in 2020. Don't forget what happened to 10 people in the German city of Hanau. The people were killed in front of two shisha bars and on the way with the car from the killer. He then later killed his parents and himself. It was a racist affected attack. The victims were only between 20 and 30 seven years old with migrational background from Bosnia, Bulgaria, Romania, Kurdish from Turkey, Afghanistan and Roma. Some of them had a German passport. Hashtag Hanau is not a one-time event. Racial profiling, racist attacks and racist killing is part of our society. 
Racism kills is the message and this needs to be stopped. That's why the names have to be spoken out. Hashtag say their names was used in Hanau as well to represent and commemorate the victims. Ferhat Unwa, Gökhan Gültecin, Hamza Kutovic, Said Nessa Hashemi, Mercedes Kirpac, Sedat Gübüc, Kaloyan Velkov, Willi Viorel Pon, Fatih Sarakoglu. Activism and process are a long game. It doesn't always work. The battles feel like they're never quite over. And sometimes it takes a generation for a movement to come to fruition. But you know what definitely does not work at all? Doing nothing. This is our tweet of the week by Eva Sider. But action, what can I do? Sag Liski, get us some good examples of what everybody can do and dropped a fitting graphics in a scene group on Facebook right when the current wave of Black Lives Matters took the street. We support the approach to use all forms of protest available, to use the full variety from direct action, self-care to entertainment. Find your options and do stuff. One example for this is community building. We'll end our show with this. Check out more infos via cycliski.com backslash home backslash but what can I do? Building communities. Ending your role in individualism can be very powerful. Change will not happen unless people unify together together to demand it. Unionize, strike, host potlucks, live together with like-minded people. People are hugely divided in the world right now, but climate change is an excellent way to have a common enemy to fight together against. So, do it. See you in two weeks.